It's really no wonder why Ray Comfort's followers are confused and deceived. Um, there was, uh, on his channel, uh, Living Waters, somebody had basically said that Ray is just teaching the law, people need to follow the law, that's what he's teaching, and their response um, was totally not what you would expect for somebody who backloads and frontloads the works into the gospel. Um, before the salvation, you have to repent of all your sins. After salvation, you have to prove that you're saved uh, by your perfect sinless life. Uh, otherwise, it could be judged according to Ray, who obviously is the final authority on everything. But let me just give you a little clip of, of what was said here. <clears throat> This was under the video, if you want to look it up, it was under the video where he's um, against Andy Stanley, which that's a whole nother ball of wax right there. I'm not going to get into that with this video. But <clears throat> he says, Here, here's their response. Now this is a response I, I don't think maybe specifically from Ray Comfort, but certainly from his channel and people that are authorized to speak on his behalf. It says, Ray is ethnically Jewish, but is a Christian. We believe in salvation by faith alone, through grace alone, in Jesus Christ alone. See it? There lies the rub, because out of one side of his mouth, he's, he's preaching uh, grace alone, faith alone, Christ alone, which is what? the gospel is, yet that's not what he teaches, okay? Um, he's lying. He's speaking double speak, you know, talking out both sides of his mouth, or as my dad would said many years ago, um, he speaks with forked tongue. So, um, Ray is not giving you the whole truth here. And you cannot mix grace and works. The Bible makes it very clear in Romans chapter 11 and verse 6. And if by grace, then is it no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then it is no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. So you cannot mix your work with the finished work of Jesus Christ upon the cross. You trust him. You believe upon him. And yet, Ray comes on my channel answering a sister in Christ saying that believing is another gospel. Um, it is the gospel. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Um, so, Ray is distorting things and as a result his followers are confused and, and I want them to know that I don't hold any ill will towards them. Um, I even hope and pray that old Ray will get saved one of these days and truly trust Christ because where he's standing right now, he approaches people in the most self-righteous, pharisaical way imaginable. Um, he, he uses the law to berate people and, and show people how wicked they are, but he doesn't offer any real gospel of salvation that will get them to heaven. Um, by the time it's all said and done, he, he's arrogant and, and uh, prideful and condescending to others. So he'll come up to somebody and say, you know, do you think you're a good person? I think I'm a pretty good person. Well, have you ever stolen anything? Okay. Have you ever lied? Um, have you ever committed adultery? Because you know the Bible says that whosoever looketh upon a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery already in his heart. And um, so then by the time he gets done, he says, so what you've just admitted is that you're a lying, cheating, cheating blasphemous, adulterer, and murderer at heart. And so he just lays it all out for him. So when we're presenting the gospel to people, we present to them that in general, everybody's a sinner. All of sin falls short of the glory of God. Okay. Um, 
If you've broken the law in one, you've broken it in all. It's very simple. Uh, so people, when they believe upon Christ, they've already admitted they're a sinner in need of salvation. They've already come to the conclusion that they can't save themselves, that they're sinners separated from God. And so the point of the gospel is to give them good news. Um, <clears throat> we want them to understand that rejecting God will send them to hell, eternally separated from them in the lake of fire. And uh, these things are true and necessary. But at the same time, we present to them that Jesus Christ loves them. That um, he said that uh, over in John, John chapter 3, For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So this is the message we need to preach. This is the message that we need to tell people. Yes, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, but Jesus Christ paid for your sin already on the cross. That's taken care of. What is needed to reconcile uh, mankind to the Father through Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Ghost is to believe upon him to put their trust in him. And Ray misses the mark there. By saying that believing is another gospel, um, he is now lying to people and not pointing people to Christ, but rather to himself and his ministry. That's why he's Ray comfortless. He offers no comfort. Or as another brother in Christ put it, Ray discomfort. Um, and and his, his ministry is not living waters as it should be, but because of his false gospel, it's dead waters. He, he offers nothing. Um, you know, I believe someday even the Dead Sea in Israel uh, is going to be opened up and, and uh, be able to flow with fresh water again when Jesus Christ returns and, and, and comes upon the Mount of Olives and the, the land splits. Um, but... That's not going to be so with Ray, Ray Comfort's false gospel. Um, it's still dead waters. It's going to be dead waters because uh, the man running that operation is preaching a false gospel. But this is the point, brothers and sisters, that I want to make. that The devil is very crafty. He's very deceitful. Um, and we must be aware of his, his ways and his, his methods and the people that he uses um, for your adversary the devil walketh about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. So, don't be so quick to just jump right in there and, and think that everybody out there is just preaching a gospel message, except for maybe those Mormons and Jehovah's Witnesses. No, most of mainstream Christianity is not preaching the true gospel message either. They're lying to you. And... Every single time it's rooted in pride and it's rooted in a desire to control people, to manipulate them, to have parishioners, to have a congregation that they can uh, look to and keep them in bondage to them. Okay, But the Bible says different. We are to look to Jesus Christ, the author and finisher of our faith. It is Christ who we are to look to. And every single ministry that's worth its salt that's worth anything at all, will always point to Christ, not to themselves, uh, not to my ministry. Um, it's about Jesus Christ and Him crucified, period. And when people like Ray Comfort teach that you have to repent of all of your sins, which the Bible never says you have to do in order to be saved, never once, anywhere, does it say that. <clears throat> and... And when he teaches that you have to have this changed life, you have to prove to everybody, to show everybody that your life has changed, that now you don't go bar hopping and, and uh, chasing women or whatever else in, in order to get to heaven, okay? Then all the focus is on the person's works. And remember what we just read here in Romans chapter 11, okay? Let's read it one more time for, for the proper emphasis. And if by grace, then it then is it no more of works. So 
God's grace enters the picture. It's not our works. Okay, I, I did not work to get myself saved, and I do not work to keep myself saved. I am saved by trusting Christ, his finished work upon the cross. He, he died upon the cross to pay for the sins of mankind. He was buried in a tomb, and he rose victoriously on the third day to prove he is who he is, that he is the eternal Son of God, sent from the Father, the everlasting Father, to save mankind if they would just believe upon him. That's what they have to do. Is that a work on our part, just trusting him? No, we're trusting his work. We're trusting his finished work. He said from the cross, it is finished. There was no more work to be done. He sits at the right hand of the Father. But the Bible makes it very clear through the Apostle Paul, and if by grace, then is it no more of works, otherwise grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then is it no more grace, otherwise work is no more work. You cannot have it both ways. You can't have your cake and eat it too, Ray. And you're deceiving your followers. You're deceiving uh, people who are looking to your ministry as having some type of, of worthy substance that they can hold on to, that they can say, yes, this is, this is worthy of, of listening to and giving my time to and perhaps even donations and for everything else. It's not. You're speaking with forked tongue. You're talking out both sides of your mouth. On the one hand, you'll tell this person that we believe in salvation by faith alone, through grace alone, in Jesus Christ alone. But then, you'll add works to the gospel. Whether it's before or after or both, it's still wrong. Because salvation is by faith alone, in Christ alone, because His grace is shed abundantly upon us, upon our hearts, and it's not anything that we ever deserve. He, he saves us, not based upon us, because we deserve it, but because He loves us. Grace is unmerited favor. Um, we can't go about trying to seek favor from God uh, to try to show that we deserve it. When we get to heaven, there's nothing that we can point to and say, see there, I did this and this and this, so therefore I deserve salvation. No, you're in heaven because you trusted Christ. You put your trust in him. You recognize that you're a sinner in need of a savior. Jesus Christ saves you based upon your faith in him. And therefore you are saved. You're saved to the uttermost. And what a lot of these uh, so-called preachers don't like to deal with is the issue of eternal security. Uh, people like John Hagee and the others, they will uh, typically avoid it. I, I try to listen to pieces of sermons for a long time about John Hagee, and, and he just would not go there on his programs. And the reason is they don't want to deal with eternal security because, you know what? If we're saved, we're saved to the uttermost, once saved, always saved. If that's true, then his gospel of false works is out. It's gone. It has to take a hike because Jesus Christ did all the work. And therefore, nothing in my hand I bring, simply to thy cross I cling. I trust him. It's not my own works, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. So our works are filthy rags, Ray. And you're a self-righteous, hypocritical Pharisee who will not admit the truth. And you try to pass yourself off as some type of sinless perfectionist who's already achieved and you can show everybody your wonderfulness just like the Pharisees of old. Nothing's really changed. You know, they desire the best places to sit and, and for a show they make long-winded prayers and all these other things. But it's all for the purpose of putting people down. But remember that between the Pharisee and the publican when they went to the temple, the Pharisee says, I thank you, God, that I'm not like this publican here. Uh, I give tithes of, of all that I possess. I fast twice in the week, you know, and he lists his accomplishments to God. But the publican smote upon his breast and said, Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. 
And I tell you, Jesus said, that the other went away justified. It was the publican who went home justified before God. It was not the Pharisee. So you would think that they would read and take heed, but they do not because they're blinded just like the Pharisees. But uh, Jesus confronted these Pharisees and said, and the Pharisees asked, are we blind also? And <clears throat> Jesus said, um, let me look this up here. I want to get it right. John chapter 9, I believe, verse 40. And some of the Pharisees which were with him heard these words and said unto him, Are we blind also? Jesus said unto them, If ye were blind, ye should have no sin. But now ye say, We see, therefore your sin remaineth. You see, they knew who Jesus was, but they liked their place of authority. They liked um, being looked up to by men. But Jesus showed them who they really were. And at the end of the day, Ray Comfort and many others offer a false gospel that does not save you. And you need to understand that Ray is talking out both sides of his mouth. And there is uh, no point in attacking me I was attacked in the comments uh, pretty harshly. In fact, I'm just giving up on comments. Um, I might have the, the comments open for a while on this video, but um, comments are going to go away. We're going to do comments in the uh, community tab section, um, but comments on the videos, I'm just not even going to deal with them anymore. If you want to write to me, um, you can email me at purewordkjv at gmail.com. But these folks need to understand that Ray Comfort is lying to them. And he is a heretic. And he says one thing out of one side of his mouth and says another out of another side of his mouth. The two do not match. Okay, they're not the same. And I pray that every single saint who is listening to these teachers will get spiritual discernment that, that Jesus Christ will help them understand through the mind and power of the Holy Spirit that these people are lying. And when you discover that, walk away from them. That's what you need to do. So until next time, God bless you all and take care.